Hey there, my name is Nef, I'm a dev, and today I want to talk about some libraries that I have really enjoyed using with SvelteKit and that have really pushed my developer experience with SvelteKit. This is like just a little selection of things I use, or yeah, more like things that I very often use, I should say. Let's just begin with the first thing, which is Skeleton UI. I know that there have been lots of uh, talk about Chatsian UI and uh, some other libraries, and don't get me wrong, I like Shetian. I just think the implementation of Shetian at the beginning is a little bit of a hurdle and it just, um, in my opinion, it's just way easier to do it with, with Skeleton UI. And yeah, so if we go to their documentation, they have some components in here, like accordions, which look pretty sweet and we can style them. They also have themes so we can generate custom themes. Um, like themes that we want. Uh, we don't do that. They have some preset themes. I like the wintry one. I like the crimson one. And I think the vintage one. Yeah, the vintage one looks also really... Um, the vintage one also looks very cool. And yeah, so this is uh, basically Skeleton UI. So I have been using Skeleton UI for NevilleBram.com from CodeDoodle. If you thought they would look the same just because I use the same UI library, they don't. So this is my portfolio. Um, this is also one of their components. This is the timeline component or no, not the timeline, but the stepper component, I think. They provide primitives like cards, little badges. Yeah, CodeDoodle and NevilleBram, they look the same because um, I have provided the same themes for them. Yeah, this is why they look the same, but I think you can like basically give them any feel you want because uh, they have, I think they mentioned that here, adaptive theming. You can do it simple, you can do it elegant like this, playful or brutalist. So you can really define anything you want. So if you go to um, create a theme, okay, well, these, this theme is kind of ugly. Uh, yeah, let's just use that one. We can also adjust the border radius to just be zero pixels. And then if we go ahead and use tokens, which are, which is one of their principles, so design tokens right here, we can do border token, uh, border radius token, so rounded token. And yeah, then we can basically style the whole app in a very clean way. So yeah, this, the setup for this one is quite straightforward. We can just go ahead and do bun create skeleton app at latest and then skeleton sample and then we can just go through the setup uh, you can choose bare bones or app shell starter let's just take app shell starter we take the wintry theme um tailwind typo i like and typescript and Island, we, let's take all of them. And then we can do code skeleton sample, which will open that one. Bun install, bun dev. And we have these cute little, yeah, really nice, uh, nice stuff. Uh, very beautifully styled at the beginning. And I just, I think skeleton UI is a, a pretty solid library for creating UIs because it's just super simple and just super straightforward. And at the same time, very, Personal, personalizable so, or customizable. Yeah, I have just used it for many of my projects and I will probably use it. Um, maybe important to note is that next.skeleton.dev is on its way. So uh, this one is their next iteration of Skeleton. They will be supporting Next.js as well soon. So yeah, they also have some themes uh, which look quite pleasant. Yeah, so... Uh, Bear in mind, they have an update, so this video might be out of date um, soon, maybe. But uh, right now, it's just how I use it. Next.js. A warning, this page is a preview. A skeleton v3 is not yet available. The following instructions will fail. So this is just like their scaffolding. Um, it's actually not there yet. So the second library I want to talk about is... Svelkit Superforms. I already made a dedicated video to that. Um, I will link it up here somewhere. Um, and yeah, basically Svelkit Superforms uh, helps us deal with forms. And it's super cool. So let me show you that. Here we have our code for CodeDoodle. 
And the way we just use superforms is we initialize this Zod object. We can also use other validator libraries. Then we go ahead and initialize the form in our load function. And then we can go ahead and check if the form is valid. And if it is not valid, we can return a fail and it will supply these errors, which we defined in Zod. So um, use cases are codoodle and nevelbram.com slash create and nevelbram.com slash contact. So in here we have this one, we need to supply an email, .co. Now let's try that again. Your message is too short and now it will succeed. Your email was sent successfully. Same thing here. Um, we need to write some more. You created too many posts. Uh, I will cover that in a second. And yeah, so basically this is Superforms. Uh, I made a dedicated video, like I said, linked somewhere up here or down there. And yeah, in combination with this Superforms, we have Svelkit Rate Limiter, which uh, I also already demonstrated if you watched um, correctly or if you watched attentively you created too many posts. This is because I tested out this form um, before and <laughs> I created a little bit too many posts. So the way the rate limiter works is we just go ahead and install svelkit-rate-limiter and then we make this new limiter object right here, which is IP. And then we define how many times per hour or we can also do, we have all these options, but I think I had it on hour. So we can define how much, how many times per hour and down here we can do it a bit more uh, precise with the user agent. Yeah, so this is a Swellkit rate limiter and then we can go ahead into here and await um, if the limiter is limited and then we can in combination with uh, superforms we can set message form you created too many posts please try again later and return the status of too many requests the third library i want to show you or the fourth because the third was kind of a bonus but the third library i want to show you is dayjs so dayjs is in my opinion the better way to deal with dates so um, i have two use cases for dayjs uh, now and yeah so First thing is the project I have been working on, which is Labora. Up here it says app because it's a mono repo. Um, but yeah, basically we have this huge utils uh, thing and DayJS gives us all these operations because if you ever wanted to uh, deal with dates in JavaScript, it, it kind of sucks. So yeah, date.update, we can do, I don't know, date.substract, we can do date.set and it's just so convenient. We can just modify dates however we want and that's just crazy, like date.substract, subtract one and then unit and unit can be month or week. And so we can basically tell date.js subtract one and then for example, week. Yeah, but I also use DayJS in here. Uh, they also have this neat little plugin, which I'm going to show you now. We have Codoodle uh, right here. And they have this little plugin where we can use from now. So nine days ago, it just basically calculates. And I think after some breakpoint, like this one will soon hit its breakpoint. After a month, it will say one month ago. Let's try this again. Okay, you created too many posts. Okay, well, um, we can go ahead and do, if we go ahead and create a post right now, we will see uh, like a few seconds ago. So this is DayJS. DayJS, I would really recommend if you have, if you want to deal with anything uh, with dates. So if we go to dayjs.day.js.org, um, this is their site. So it's a two kilobyte alternative. So it's a very small package. We can go to their docs. There are so many 
things we can do with this, like is leap year is same time from now, and they have so many plugins and stuff. So I would just highly recommend you check out DayJS. Only downside, they don't have a dark mode documentation side, which is a bit of a shame. Just kidding. So these were my uh, few libraries that I have been using uh, with Svelkit. I really love them. Of course, there is also Drizzle ORM and Terso and all of this other stuff. But I think this does not really belong in here because today I wanted to talk about the front end side aspect of things and not about the back end side of things. So yeah, if you like this video, go ahead and drop it a like and subscribe to my channel and activate the notification bell so you don't miss out Sunday's video. And yeah, I will see you then. Bye.